I don't know that I know that there's a very direct correlation between stimulant medication and processing speed, mainly because, um, except to the, to the extent where um, the stimulant medication um, causes the neurocircuitry in the prefrontal cortex and the parietal lobe to, uh, you know, to, uh, to function better, which could then probably lead to, um, you know, more efficient processing, certainly, because there aren't all those missed neural connections and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I didn't come across anything that said, okay, stimulant medication increases processing speed. I didn't come across where it just stated that directly. But it, I always wondered, if, you know, if it does. But anyway, I mean, again, when it comes to processing speed, now, some of the, you know, some of the literature talks about a processing speed disability, but that's really not a, you know, a legitimate diagnosis. It's not in DSM-4 or anything like that. But uh, sometimes you do see diagnoses of uh, cognitive disorder not otherwise specified when someone has working memory or processing speed weaknesses, and so they'll use that diagnosis. Uh, I might use learning disorder not otherwise specified, you know, if there's some problems academically, then I'd say also characterized by weaknesses in working memory and processing speed. But I, I know that if you look at the back of DSM-4, which is a diagnostic manual, you'll see this section, I think it's cognitive disorder, uh, and it's called, it's called mild, cog, mild neurocognitive disorder. And it lists all these things that, can, that you could make that diagnosis from. Um, and it says weaknesses in perceptual reasoning, weaknesses in processing speed, working memory, um, verbal comprehension, all the things that are measured on an IQ test. Except it's supposed to be, when I read it, you know, when I read the whole description, it says it has to be secondary to a medical condition. Now I suppose, you know, ADHD could be considered a medical condition, but often the ADHD alone if, you're, you know, if your goal is to get accommodations, the ADHD alone might do it, you know, because if you have working memory and processing speed weaknesses. If you don't have the ADHD, though, I don't think, I don't know how far you get with that kind of diagnosis. Again, Ellen, what's your experience with mild neurocognitive disorder? Characterized by weaknesses in working memory and processing speed. You mean in terms of response to stimulant meds? No. <laughs> or just, just... No, no in, in response to it being considered a diagnosis that would warrant uh, an intervention, like a, a accommodation plan in school or at the Other college. than extended time, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. I just wonder. It's possible with, with poor working memory and slow, with slow processors, it, that can significantly interfere with reading comprehension, even though um, the individual may well decode, you know, the words well. But uh, that that person might benefit from, say, a text reader, um, which is a computer software that will uh, literally read text. Uh, that scan text, digital text, and, and read it out loud, that can sometimes bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so, so then when you think about, when you think about, you know, interventions or recommendations for processing speed, that is one of them, a, 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 a particularly good one, using a text reader. Um, but, you know, of course they need more time to respond orally in class and to complete seat work and to complete assignments and you know overall you just need to reduce the time pressure if you want to find out what they know. Now of course if you're testing math fluency, how fast I can do math facts, you know that's what you're measuring but usually it would be good just to have them compete against themselves or do it separately. Um, but you know it may need, it may require things like shortening assignments and maybe that the parent has to negotiate with the teacher if they're taking five hours doing homework and they say, you know, really, maybe they need to have, uh, let's, let's focus on quality over quantity 
unless, or if they show mastery of certain skills, that's not required as repetitive work, or they don't have to do 46 problems, they can do, you know, 15 or 20. Um, so shortening the practice assignments. Um, and once again, you know, building the, building the efficiency by making them uh, as much as possible automatic by teaching math facts and spelling rules and the vocabulary that goes along with a certain um, you know, subject area uh, and working on increasing reading speed uh, by you know, repeated readings or using auditory uh, uh, programs where they have to listen as they read along like they use Read Naturally, that's been around for years. Um, reading lists of high frequency words and keeping a record of their progress so you're trying to build uh, speed of word recognition and practicing the math facts using educational software um, and of course teaching them time management strategies and that's what I was referring to and I said maybe it would be good for them to estimate the amount of time it's going to take them to do a certain task and then start they can start to watch themselves and just start working and then see if they were able to complete that task and, and the time they thought they could do it. Um, and of course, determining uh, when it comes to assessing what they know, using some other means, using a power test where you just, they can take as long as they want. You just want to find out what they know rather than how quickly they can show what they know. Um, and of course, for slow writing fluency, test orally or allow them to use voice to text software. And for, uh, you know, tests that require written responses will give them tests that have reduced written output and then also test them verbally. Now this does take more um, time on the part of the teacher. So you have to think about that, but uh, you know, taking them aside and saying, okay, you said this on this question, now tell me more about that. And then grading them on that, both the verbal and the uh, written. And Okay, this is sort of a repetition. And of course, reducing copying tasks and uh, giving them photocopies of lecture notes or partial outlines and take books or books on CD if their reading rate is slow. And one of the things Ellen referred to was the, the Kurzweil, well, she didn't say it specifically, but Kurzweil 3000. Are you familiar with that software? That can, I think it can help uh, one thing that probably helps, again, is that staying engaged a little bit better when you're reading uh, because you're listening to it as well. And so what it does, it converts the, the printed information into a, a visual format on the screen and an audio format. You can choose, I think you can choose voices, correct? Yes. Yeah. You, so, and some of the voices that you played for me, Ellen, some of them sound okay, really. They don't sound really robotic. And then also, you can highlight that information as you're reading, and you can take notes, I think, on the, on the margins there. So it's, again, it gets back to that being engaged uh, when you're doing something independently so you don't space out, lose interest. Um, and of course, take books and books on CD, and those are, that's often a lifesaver for, for kids who have a slow reading rate or slow processing speed that gets them through college or through high school. Um, and you know, there's activities to increase reading fluency. Uh, some of these may seem a little old fashioned of recognizing common letter sequences in print and cite vocabulary. You know, to a younger kid, teaching them to recognize vocabulary words quicker, cite words, common words, just so that it's really automatic. And keyboarding. And then uh, we talked about the the starting and stopping times on an assignment to increase their rate of response. And, you know, daily practice of simple math facts again, just like for the working memory. Um, and of course, these are just strategies, different ways of testing a student rather than the typical ways. And of course, focus on power tests that focus on the knowledge rather than how quickly they can show what they know. Um, accuracy over speed extra time and supervised breaks during tests. And here's where I indicated the Kurzweil and the text to voice software. Um, 
provide a scribe uh, to record their answers on tests. I don't know how the teachers have enough time to do that, but they could just, you know, dictate to the scribe, and that would be their essay question or their essay answer. And of course, reduced format, written formats. And so, those are uh, some of the things that, that may address the processing speed part of it. And, you know, as I said before, a big part of the processing